Hello everyone. Today this video is going to be about my Civ 6 wish list. So basically all the things I wish they would add to Civilization 6. So why don't we just jump right into it. So the first couple things I really like to see in Civ 6 are icebreakers. Um, so ice, um, my, my idea for an icebreaker is it's a late game naval support unit which uh, you unlock with either like steam power or electricity and lets the linked naval unit move through the ice, but with a reduced movement. Uh, similarly, uh, if you unlock radio, this should allow your submarines and nuclear submarines to move through ice, but again, at a reduced movement. Another big idea I'd like to share is Better news alerts, because I find I get so many notifications of statistics, I tend to ignore like probably 90% of them. Um, so I think a better idea is maybe a separate side panel or something or screen you can toggle on or off. Um, and I think a, a good idea is like maybe uh, maybe early on in the game, it's like a scroll or something, but then as time goes on, it becomes like a newspaper or something and it would be organized into like different sort of sections like war and diplomacy so all the sort of normal stuff so like war wars announcements battles that kind of stuff uh, and there may be a session for like weather and climate uh, so like all about the storms disasters and stuff like that um, business and trade so maybe like trade routes and like housing that kind of stuff and art and entertainment which would be about if someone maybe constructs a wonder or if you have Mendy issues or something like that. And I'll just give you a brief example of what I'm sort of thinking of. Um, so this would be like a front page. Maybe you'd see like after your turn's over um, and your turn's about to begin, you get this sort of screen um, showing the front page. Uh, like so the big things that are happening in your empire. So for this example, oh, it's war with America or something, right? Um, oh, Spy has escaped capture in London and stuff like that and all these other things and then there's like little tabs that you can go through at the top um, so this would be the front page and you go to war and politics business and trade art and entertainment and uh, the the weather and stuff as I said um, so this way it's like a little more organized and like I don't know, a little more dramatic it adds a little more flair to the game rather than just some little dingy thing on the side um, this is like I would I would more likely read this than I would a little notification um, but uh, maybe this me maybe you could uh, find a happy medium that's maybe a little more compact or something. But I don't know, just an idea, just an idea. Another big idea I have is navigable rivers. Um, so basically, um, it says what it says. Um, so let's naval units go up river. Um, there's historical precedents for these. Um, you have like an image here of the ironclads uh, going up the Mississippi uh, there. So definitely not out of, out of uh, the ordinary. Um, so uh, basically uh, in my little diagram to the right, you could see like instead of a normal tile that's just um, plain, um, the river can go into a tile um, and like uh, it's, so it's, it's, it'll, it'll look bigger or something uh, and it'll be noted in the tile description and you could move your units in uh, or up the river onto that sort of land tile and so it acts as both a land tile and a sea tile sort of like canals in a way um on to that i'd like to introduce something uh some other sort of features and stuff so one would be waterfalls and another would be locks so a waterfall would just be like a river feature that provide some sort of appeal and ships wouldn't be able to go up it unless they of course get some locks so uh, you have a little picture of a lock if you never know what a lock is it just helps ships go up and down through rivers um, and this would be unlocked with like steam power or something and it's like a canal but lets ships obviously uh, traverse um, around waterfalls Um, so here's some ideas for some tiles. Um, I find the ocean tiles tend to be very boring, kind of plain. So I think I just spruce it up a bit with uh, some of these tiles. So the first one is like these islets or uh, islands. Um, so these are like sea tiles, but they get production instead of gold. And they give a little 
combat bonus, so plus three combat bonus to defending naval units. And uh, I think uh, and a good idea is maybe they hide fortified naval units, like you can um, you know, hide them in there and then do a little sneak attack or something. Um, I think that'd be cool. Um, just just an idea. So there's a little little picture of what I'm thinking of. And then another one is uh, sea mounts. So like these are like undersea uh, water like volcanoes that maybe poke out of the out of the, out of the ocean. Um, so th again, they're kind of like the geothermal fissures that you find on land. So they'll give you science and uh, maybe 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 some extra food because there's lots of like sea creatures that um, actually thrive on these uh, sort of ecosystems. A couple of ideas for some more units. So reinforced galleys and the pirate skiff. So the reinforced galleys. Um, uh, the reason behind this is because there's a big gap between galleys, uh, which come uh, into play in the ancient era, uh, and then their next upgrade, which is the caravel, which you get in the Renaissance. So just about every unit has a one era gap. So you go, uh, usually you go ancient, and then you maybe you skip the next era, and then in medieval era you'd get your unit. But in this case, uh, I don't know why for galleys, uh, you skip two eras, and so there's a big gap between galleys and caravels, and I feel like I don't know. Like sometimes I, I I'm I'm afraid to send out my galleys because I know they're just going to be killed by some bar like barbarians and stuff like that, or um, I just don't like trust that they won't die. <laughs> so um, I think just maybe an upgrade or something to like just make them a little more livable or something, or maybe just change uh, when the galleys come in or something like that. Um, so. My idea is uh, reinforce galleys, so you unlock the, the them with uh, the buttress uh, technology um, in the medieval era, and either again upgrades the galley to a stronger unit, or the galleys just get like a better survivability. Um, so maybe like they get twenty, like twenty-five to like uh, this is a normal galley combat strength to up to maybe thirty-five, something a little more. Um, stronger. It just lets them survive a little longer until you get the caravels. And another idea is a pirate skiff. So um, this would be unlocked with maybe military training, mercenaries, or naval tradition, or something like that. Um, uh, just so so, and it's it's it's, it's a na another naval raider unit. So it's the precursor to the like the privateer, um, in it would have, I'm thinking, I was looking at some numbers of some other units um, in that sort of time frame. So I was thinking maybe just get a range of one, some maybe melee strength of 30 or range strength of 35. And, and, and there's historical precedent for like having pirates and stuff much like earlier than, um, you know, you know, classical golden age pirates that you think of in like parts of the Caribbean, right? So there, there, there are pirates all throughout history. So I think um, having like, Naval Raider units earlier on um, is uh, would be a good addition. Another big idea that I have is an outpost. So an outpost would be created by a settler, so just like a city, um, and it's unlocked by colonialism. Um, so le it's like a city, but there's a caveat. So it only gets one tile radius. So I have a little diagram on the right here. So I the center here is that that gray gray block here, and then it's only getting the one every tile around it. That's it. That's all it gets um, for, throughout the rest of the game. Um, but the thing is, it does not suffer from many housing or loyalty issues, um, and does not radiate loyalty out. Um, and it has a, maybe like a max population of like seven or something. And the, the idea behind this is it would be good for grabbing resources or securing strategic locations. So like think of, I have this image here of uh, Gibraltar. So think of like Gibraltar as like a very strategic location, um, helps you uh, secure that, that area. Um, so I think it'd just be an, a way for you to, uh, yeah, again, as to secure uh, a strategic location or uh, as in the diagram up to the, uh, on the top there is like securing those, uh, th those oil there, right? Without having to, um, invest in a city that's going to suffer from all these problems and other things, and you don't have to worry about it too much. You just want this uh, resource um, there or something like that, right? Another idea is um, land exchange. So um, maybe you can make it so you can buy slash sell or exchange tiles between civilizations. So um, I have a little diagram again 
right here on the right. So imagine uh, one player is uh, the red team. So um, all those tiles uh, sort of uh, circled in the red is one player and the gold players is um, on the right hit there. And maybe uh, the red player really wants to be able to reach the ocean and the gold player really needs that nighter. Maybe they can swap those tiles in a deal or something like that. That'd be kind of neat. No, just an idea. Um, another idea is tech and civic sharing. So maybe if you're allies with someone, you can share certain texts and civics like, OK, I'm going to give you um, uh, the, the, the tech for flight um, and you give me the tech for I don't know, um, electricity or something. Right. Um, and maybe you can trade knowledge. Maybe you can even trade knowledge of a tech or civic with another civilization. Um, and they get the Eureka or inspiration for it. So maybe that's like a, like if you're just um, instead of if you're not an ally, if you're just with any any old civilization, just um, someone you uh, some civilization you've met, you can maybe just trade this knowledge um, for maybe a whole bunch of uh, goodies. And another idea is um, pandemic. So um, kind of uh, I guess sort of weird to talk about uh, nowadays with everything going on, but um, it, uh, there is a game mode in Civilization VI uh, called the Black Death, which is about um, disease and stuff. So I don't think it's too far off from what they can do. I, th I actually thought they were going to bring it to the game uh, at some point, but they, they I think they maybe went with this global actual real, uh, real pandemic happened. I think they maybe did not want to push it, but um, I think it'd still be interesting to have. Um, so maybe it's like natural disasters, uh, but maybe it occurs on average, like maybe once an era or something um, and spreads from city to city, like decreasing the population um, and then spreads uh, faster from trade routes. And then maybe if you have flight, it, trade, uh, it spreads even more. Um, and then you would have to have certain things to help combat um, pandemics throughout the game. So maybe you get this new district called like the health ward, right? And then you can make these buildings like the gymnasium, which makes your population more healthy. Um, and then maybe like a, like a graveyard. So that lowers the spread of disease. Cause you're can, like making sure that the, the dead bodies are, <laughs> are going somewhere. Right. And then, uh, the hospital maybe helpers lowers loss of population. Like you're less likely to, uh, lose, uh, population. And then maybe like a disease center that lets the city research vaccines um, for your population. Just an idea. Um, one one thing I really oh, another idea I really like is migration. Um, I think it's a rather simple but um, very uh, interesting. So um, basically, what's going to happen is population overcrowded cities will move to other cities in your empire with excess housing. So then you won't have as many housing issues, right? Um, over an extended period of time. So like maybe after X amount of turns, uh, once that um, population is exceeded, then those people will move. So it gives you a little bit of grace period to buff up your housing if you need to. Um, and population may leave your empire for another empire if your empire is too crowded. So I have a couple examples below. And um, this happens faster depending on the you know the quality of roads, your tourism with other civilization, and if like maybe flight is unlocked or something. So, in the bottom left, I have an example here. So, um, t these are like just mentioned. These are both cities. So the one on the right has nine population out of the the, the seven housing. So um, it has too many too many people, two two extra people. Um, so those two extra people could actually move to that other city on the left, which has two out of five people. So two out of uh, out of that nine would leave, so uh, you would get four out of five in that in that other city, um, and then uh, your sort of civilization would uh, equalize. And then uh, on the right is another example. So say again, you have overcrowded in one city, but your other cities are are at max, right? They can't take any more people. So maybe it goes to another civilization. So now you know, some of your population is actually leaving. Um, so that, I think that's just an interesting example because migration is like a thing that happens all the time. Um, it's a big part of history and stuff like that. And I think it should be uh, like an interesting sort of mechanic that would uh, happen and you, it would something you really need to 
pay attention to because I feel like a lot of times I just ignore housing and just like, eh, I'll deal with it later, <laughs> right? So um, I think it would uh, put a lot more emphasis on that for sure. Uh, another idea is the grand exchange. So this would be something that's unlocked for civilizations with a stock exchange and lets you put up all your extra luxury resources uh, for trade with any civ that also has a stock exchange and is traded to the highest bidder automatically. Because I find like going into all the different menus and checking every civ, uh, talk to every leader like, hey, do you want these whales? No. Do you want these whales? No. Do you want these whales? Oh, great. Okay. Let me check if the other guy wants whales. Okay. He wants to give me more money. Okay. And then like uh, it's a bit of a process. Like maybe um, do it earlier on because it's more uh, thematic. But I think later on, um, definitely with stock exchanges, uh, it, I think it'd be uh, a lot uh, better to do it. Um, a little slice, uh, make your life a little easier. Um, and also I think uh, maybe introducing something uh, about called like loans to civilization. So, um, this is an example of a loan, um, for example. So maybe set like a principle. So say you loan somebody a hundred gold. So um, I would loan some civilization a hundred gold and they would promise to give me back that hundred gold plus a yield of um, 10 gold um, after a term of 30 turns, right? So pretty simple. Um, so something like that, you could do like something like that. Um, I think that would be uh, very interesting. And then on top of that is um, just take that one step further is maybe a commercial victory because we have victory types for um, diplomacy, science, culture, all, basically all your different districts, but not a commercial victory, right? Um, so I was just trying to think of some characteristics that would define a commercial victory. And I was thinking maybe maybe you own one of each luxury resource on the map. And, and not including trading, like you can't have trade it and get it. Um, you have to like actually own the luxury resource and maybe you have to have like five corporations and then maybe you have to have like something crazy, like 30,000 gold or something. And then you have to have a trade route to each civilization. I think that's okay. Um, obviously, I think uh, any of these can be modified at all, but I think just the idea of commercial victory is very interesting to me. And that's it for this video. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, please feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I definitely appreciate it. Um, I'll see you around. Thanks. Bye.